Prior to his position with Medifem, Mr. Jones was a sales manager at Lee Manufacturing in Idaloo, Texas. Please welcome Craig Jones this morning as our first presenter. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, again, my name is Craig Jones, and I'm the district sales manager for Medifem. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about uh, precision mobile drip irrigation, or what we like to call PMDI. So, what is precision mobile drip irrigation? Well, PMDI is the process of taking our heavy wall drip hose and connecting it to a pivot and dragging that hose with the pivot through the field. Our aim is to combine the efficiency of drip irrigation with the economics of pivot irrigation. So, how does how does PMDI connect to the pivot? Well, we take, a, we take our drip line, which is connected to a flexible hose, and that flexible hose is connected to the drop off the pivot. We have a manifold that runs across, and you can spread that out and do any kind of row spacing that you want with that dripper line, and that is fastened in place with a uh, steel cable that goes across to keep tension on it. We have two different styles of placement. We have a low line style and a high line style. Uh, the low line style, which is targeted at, at shorter crops such as cotton, uh, it's, suspended, it's a suspended cable that's 48 inches or less above the ground for shorter crops. Uh, the high line style, uh, your, your fixed cable and manifold are going to be way up higher uh, on the system, and that's going to en enable you to really tall crops like cotton so, or uh, corn, so we can still get the drop down in between those rows. Here's two pictures of each. Uh, here on the left, you have your low line. That's basically what it looks like, as well as the high line there on the right. So uh, who's, who's putting this stuff out in the marketplace? Well, the first that I'm going to mention is TL Irrigation. Uh, TL Irrigation uh, first started this. They patented this process back in 2001. Uh, it started up in Nebraska. They had some uh, terrain with some really tight soils, and they found that their LEPA up there was ineffective do the top soils and runoff and evaporation. They needed a process to slowly percolate that, that moisture into the ground where it wouldn't run off so fast. The product that, that TL was using for their PMBI was, uh, was our Triton X dripper line. Now this Triton X is a heavy wall dripper line. It is a non-pressure compensating tubing, which means that it's going to require pressure regulators on your drops to achieve the correct pressures for that tube drip to flow at the correct uh, flow rate. Uh, they have their emitters uh, spaced at, two, or at six inches apart, and they are two gallon, uh, gallon per hour emitters. You can identify the TL's version in the field because it's going to be black in color. Now the other version that we have out in the marketplace is what is called Dragon Line. Now Dragon Line was created by Monty Peter of Peter Irrigation up in Kansas. Uh, back in 2012, he, he saw the, the TL version, he liked it, but he, he thought that he could improve on it and tweak it a little bit. And, and so what he did was he purchased a 320-acre farm with a 200-gallon uh, gallon per minute well that he could experiment and try some different things out. And, this, and here's what he basically came up with. He's using our DripNet PC dripper. The, the DripNet PC is a pressure compensating emitter so you no longer need the pressure regulators off, off your drops. The, the dripper line will pressure compensate itself. The emitters are placed six inches apart with a flow of one gallon per hour. Uh, you can identify this in the field because it's going to be bright orange in color. So what are some advantages uh, of PMDI? Well, first and foremost, one of our big targets is guys with, with, with smaller uh, gallon per minute wells. This is your, this is your grower and uh, maybe a lot of you guys in this room. Perhaps you started off with a pivot that had 600 gallons per minute, but now the water's falling off, and maybe you only have 200 gallons per minute, maybe 300. You cut off some spans. Well, with PMBI, you can outfit that pivot back and, and you utilize the entire pivot in what water that you have. One of the biggest advantages is just environmental. You know, traditional pivots deliver water at 90 per, or 90% effective at delivering the water, but losses occur when the water leaves the nozzle due to wind, evaporation, runoff from unle unlevel terrain and soil conditions. This spreads the water out over a big square foot area and it slowly percolates into the soil. And that's where you can capture way more uh, of, of the water and get, get the utilization out of it. As well as uh, you can, when using PMBI, you can water in freezing conditions. Uh, so if you want to pre-water, it's February, 
frozen outside, this will allow you to do it way more effectively. One of the big advantages that I've been getting feedback from my growers that do have this in the field is it reduces or eliminates wheel track problems. Since, the, since, the pivot, since we're watering back behind the pivot, the terrain that the pivot is actually rolling across is constantly dry, you know, barring we don't have any rain. But, you know, the pivots aren't getting stuck any longer. So, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is every drip guy's favorite video. Windy days in West Texas. I don't know how many guys have seen a pivot doing this, blowing your water almost into your neighbor's farm. Our idea is to get that water down on the ground and outside of the wind. How about cold weather? This picture right here, this was on Monty Cheater's farm up in Kansas. It was 17 degrees outside that day. See that that nozzle is already frozen up. You can also see how it's making a sheet of ice out there on the ground. And he's got this every other span alternating with PMBI. When we get over to the PMBI section, you can see that there's no none of that frozen sheet of ice on the ground. Watering. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can still see that that line is still dripping water onto that ground, even in 17 degree weather. Okay. And then here's just a picture of the dry wheel tracks. As you can see, the, drag, the, the line is dragging way back behind the pivot, leaving you dry wheel tracks to run that pivot. So one of the big questions that I get at any, any time I'm talking about PMBI is do you need filtration? You know, filtration is oftentimes a new concept in irrigation for pivot guys. Uh, this particular uh, scenario uh, took place about five miles east of Plainview. Uh, the grower put one span of PMBI on his pivot. Uh, and we looked, since we only had one span, uh, the discussion between us and the dealer who installed it and the grower, we felt like the water was pretty clear pretty clean we're only doing one one span we could probably get away without having filtration on the system now about a month into it to his watering cycle we noticed that we got a call from him that some of his drippers weren't dripping anymore and so we went out to the field to investigate make sure we didn't have clogged emitters walked out the field picked up one of those lines and we could feel uh, well the last three emitters on every drop were not dripping and you could feel that hose and it was very stiff and it was cram packed full of something so we went out there, we started pulling plugs off the end of these lines, and here's what we found. Now we flushed them out, we put the plug back in, bam, the last three emitters were all of a sudden dripping again. Perfect. They had been clogged up and completely covered up those emitters. They never clogged the emitters. So to answer the question, yes, PMDI requires 80 mesh filtration. Now we have a few options that you can use here. Uh, first, and, the, and probably the most popular version that we've had, is called our scan clean filter. This will connect right at the base of your pivot, filter out the, uh, filter out the dirty water. One of the big advantages of this is it can be, you can flush this while the system is running. Just open this out, this ball valve outlet right here, crank the handle, it'll Run, that, run the brushes right on the inside, and you can flush it out, close it back up, go, go back to watering without ever having to stop the pivot. We also are offering our, uh, what we call our circulating screen filter. Same basic operation as the, the scan cleans. Just a little bit different setup. You can be run while, you can, you can flush this while the pivot is running. Open up your valve, turn this, knob, this crank right here to agitate the inside, close it back up, and go right back to work. A little more simpler version is just our manual screen filter. Just a, just a tube canister with the screen on the inside. A little less expensive, a little more simple, but you do have to shut down the water before you can flush this thing. You unscrew this in, take the cap off, and you pull the, pull the screen out of the inside and rinse it off. Now for more sandy situations, which I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll bet that's probably most guys in West Texas, uh, we, do, uh, we, we have in many cases put hydrocyclones up with your filters on a system. You know, you, a lot of you guys probably know how a hydrocyclone works. 
but for those of you that don't, uh, you put this up next to your filter, the water comes in the inlet, it spins that water around inside that cone at a high velocity, and it throws that sand to the outside of that cone. Clean water is sucked right up out of, out of the center, and the sand falls down the sides into the sediment. And then you just open this valve to flush your sediment tank ever so long. So what about germination, chemigation, and fertigation? Well, a lot of guys, you know, you saw the picture, it's dropping that water right in a very ne narrow row. So, so what do we need to do if we do need to broadcast some water over the top? Well, we have a couple of options. Uh, the first is what's called our double valve assembly. This will connect right between your, your, your drop and your, your drip line. It's got uh, two ball valves in here, so you can have just your, your traditional sprayer right there and then connect it to your PMBI right there. Close one, open up the other, make you a lap with your sprays, switch them back and go right back to, to watering through your PMBI. We also have this version, which is called our Dragon Line Adapter. It's got this nipple right here that fits up into your, uh, you know, your conventional sprayer, clicks right in. So you can run your Dragon Line around, you can pull it right off, run around with the sprinkler for a lap if you need to. So speaking about fertigation and chemigation, uh, there's a few high points here that we wanted to add. Um, and this is the advantages of running it through your dripper line. Uh, targeted application of fertilizer with no effect from wind or runoff. Banded application of fertilizers means higher plant utilization and the efficiency of applied elements. More frequent applications of fertilizers at lower rates helps maintain the lower EC level of the irrigation water. Soil water to oxygen ratios improve the, fer the fertility uptake uh, so you don't have waterlogged roots. So what have we seen so far? What, what, what happens when the rubber meets the road? Well, we've had a few trials out there. The first one I want to talk about is in 2013. This is a 320 acres that I told you about earlier that Monty Teeter, Teeter purchased for this. So what he did, he ran one trial where he was testing three different spans on a pivot. Now the first span, or it was actually the third span, was PMBI. The fourth span was Wobblers. And the fifth span was, was LDA sprays. Servitec came out and placed some uh, moisture probes up throughout the field to measure what was going on with the moisture in the soil. What Servitec came back with on the crop scout reports was that there was 50% more available moisture to the plant with the PMDI than the other two spans during the growing season. Now after harvest, what they found was that span three with the PMDI after harvest had a six foot moisture profile versus a two to three foot profile on spans four and five. And as far as the yields, the PMDI out yielded the, the silage tonnage by 20%. 2014, we had a trial at Colorado State University. Uh, the trial was comparing uh, PMDI to LDN sprays in corn. Now, this is interesting. It only, the PMDI only saw a three-tenths per bushel increase with the PMDI. However, the PMDI used 30% less water than, than, the, than the sprays. Currently, we have, we have a trial going on at Kansas State University. This is up in Garden City, Kansas. Uh, we have two separate trials comparing uh, PMDI to, to low elevation sprays. The first is, is running the two comparisons at a 300 gallon per minute well, and the second is doing the same thing on a 600 gallon per minute well. Now, as, as, since it's going on currently, we, we don't know any results on yield or what it's going to be. We'll know that soon. But what he has found at this point, he is using weighing lysimeters to, to measure the evaporative loss in the soil. And what he has found is that the PMDI has 40% less evaporative loss than the low elevation sprays. Uh, as I've mentioned, you know, Kansas State, Colorado State, what are we doing right here in West Texas? Well, we intended to put one over here on the, uh, on the Texas Tech farm up here by uh, New Deal. Uh, we were planning on putting that in around May. If anybody was around in May, you know what was going on. We kept planning to put it in and it would rain. We planned to put it in and it would rain. And we just kept pushing back and pushing back until we didn't get that installed this year. We still have plans to do that next year and we'll run some trials on that and see what it does. So as far as distribution, uh, our main distribution channel is going to be through Equipment Supply. They have several sub-dealers underneath them that are distributing these products, uh, both fitted and irrigation companies. So if you're interested, I'd urge you to contact these guys uh, to see where you can get some for yourself. Any questions?
Okay, well, I have a booth over here. I have several samples on my table. I have some brochures to talk about our emitters as, as well as well as the entire line of the, the, the Dragon Line. So uh, please feel free to come see me if you have any questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, back up. I want to get the business number. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.